Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Theseus, the Dark Orbit, which is a science fiction kind of action strategy game set on Theseus, this space station around some, in, in some sort of dark orbit around some planet somewhere, I don't know where, and it seems to be a space station that's attracted a lot of attention. A bunch of scientists have come here to, I don't know, study the origin of the universe or something, and a bunch of aliens have come here to do all their alien <laughs> you know, acid-spitting nastiness, and space marines have come to fight the aliens, and, and then um, gray aliens, you know, the uh, I want to believe X-Files types have come to watch what everybody's doing, and, and, and so there, this is a game of four, actually five, I should say five factions, and, you know, that are competing, each trying to win in this very, very tiny space station. So, Let's go. I have set this up for a two-player game. In this game, I will be the James Cameron, Ridley Scott-esque aliens, these little green guys. This is our little home sector, this little hive where we start. Jen will be the scientists. As you can see, these nice science ladies, I think they're ladies, yeah, in their lab coats over here in this science lab. And uh, so there's our two sectors and then there's three other ones that appear in every game. And each sector has a special ability that it'll do if you move to it. And, oh uh, gosh, I wonder, you know, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Or no, actually, well, high level, what we're trying to do, well, for me, as the aliens, what I'm trying to do is as much damage to the scientists as possible. If I could knock the scientists all the way down from 20, all the way down to zero, I straight out win. The scientists, on the other hand, are trying to collect data. They're, you know, they're doing research and whatnot. So they are trying to earn 20 data points. And if they do, they win. Also, if the scientists somehow arm themselves, they could actually do 20 points of damage to me to win. Now, likely neither of those, uh, you know, getting down to zero hit points or up to 20 data points are going to be what triggers the end of the game. The game also has a kind of a built-in timer. And when the timer runs out, Whoever has the most points wins. In the case of the scientists, it's however much life they have left plus however much data they've gotten. And for me, it's just however much life I've got left. Okie doke. So, that's what we're doing. I want to snack on scientists' brains. They want to dissect my brain and study it. Let's go. Okay. You know, the game, um, we'll say, actually, first of all, we have to set up. We've actually put out all five sectors around this central thing. We've set up the scoreboard. And now each player has to do a little bit of customization at the beginning. Now, I have... 15 cards. Now, I only know what the top one is, this hidden power. You can see I actually have quite a few more cards, but they get randomly drawn every time I play. So there's several cards I don't have. I don't know what my deck is, but I've got a deck of 15 cards. These are installations, for lack of a better um, term, that I can put into this space station uh, that give me special abilities and whatnot. <gasps> like uh, this one means I could have hidden extra little alien tokens in various rooms that will surprise the scientists. <clears throat> when they least expect. <clears throat> so I can basically have more of my forces spread around. And what happens at the beginning of the game, you know, after we get our 15 cards randomly and we shuffle them up, we have this uh, face-up draw pile. I draw three hidden vent shortcut and tentacles, and I get to install one of these three anywhere in the space station that I want. And so that it'll be active right from the get-go. And I think, well, tentacles are neat. They uh, basically let slow down my opponent, so they move more slowly. I have to spend more time moving. Vent uh, basically speeds up my movement. I can skip entire sections of the space station as I'm moving around. But I think I'm going to start with hidden, because I do actually want to put the hurt to these scientists, because that's how I win. You know, basically uh, one wound for each enemy unit in here during your onslaught. Okay. Now I gotta pick a room to put this in. I could put it in my own room. You can see all the rooms have varying numbers of empty slots, I think they're called. All, these are all sectors and these are slots that I can install them. I think I'm gonna install it into this sector. <coughs> Which means that in this sector there is now this little hit token reminding everybody that there are hidden aliens in this room. And the reason I put it in here is because this is a sector that I suspect Jen might like to go to. She might like to move her scientists over here because whenever you move a character into this sector, you get a bonus action for free. You get to take an additional turn. So this is a really nice place for Jen to go. But now if she comes here, she has to deal with my hidden aliens. Okay. And now my other two I drew, they get, they come into this uh, pending state where they're down here. They have not been installed yet. They're waiting to be installed so that 
I could put a shortcut somewhere in the space station and tentacles. These lovely, lovely tentacles somewhere in the station. But they haven't been done yet, and I will have to activate these to install them somewhere in the space station. <clears throat> now, Jen, she does the same thing. She has a random deck of 15, and uh, her things are a small laboratory, the gripper, and the camcorder. Camcorders are a really common one for the scientists. And then she sees her fourth thing coming up is station schematics, but that'll be later. Okay, she's going to pick one of these and install it anywhere she wants. Small laboratory is a place where if she goes to her lab, she can collect more data, which remember is what she wants to do. Gripper is a neat one. This is a trap. You can see this is the icon for trap. So if an enemy unit moves into a room where there's a gripper, the gripper grabs it and won't let it leave. So this is basically a trap that can prevent my guys from moving around. And the camcorder, actually I think I put this one out because this is really cool. This one basically, if the enemy ever moves into a room where the camcorder is, the camcorder videotapes them. By the way, all the cards have little descriptions, rules. You don't have to go to the rule manual. The manual, this is really cool. You just can read on the back of the card the more specific rules about them. But it's a trap. If I go into a room where there's camcorders, she will videotape it. And then later on, she can go into the room and pick up the tapes, or you know, the data, and score points. Let's see, so now Jen needs to put this somewhere where she thinks I'm going to go, and I know exactly where that's going to be. She's going to put it over here in the corridors. Because if I am ever if I ever move any of my aliens over here to the corridors, uh, that activates the onslaught, which is what I want to do, because that means I can attack Jen everywhere in, this, in, the, uh, sub, in, in the space station. So, but every time I go here now to activate the onslaught, Jen videotapes my alien and can score points. So now this room works for both of us. All right. And then her other two things, the gripper and the small lab, go over here. They're pending. They may or may not get built and added to the space station. Okay. So after we put out our, you know, our installation cards, then each of us has three units um, with a regular side. Here's my little, oh, isn't he so sweet? Look at him. Ah! and an upgraded side. Now, interestingly, my aliens, at the beginning, they can't attack. You know, because you can kind of think of them as the little, the little chestburster guys. They, you know, they're not big enough to actually do any damage yet. But later on, I could upgrade them, and then these lightning bolts mean they can take care of business. Jen's in the same situation. Her scientists can't attack, but she could upgrade her scientists. But you can see, they only have one lightning bolt. They're never quite as tough as my aliens once they're upgraded. But I've got these three markers, and I put two of them in my starting zone, in my starting section. Sector. So I'll put one here and here. And now the other one I could put any place. I, I could put it in my starting sector. I could put it in gen sector. I could put it any place I want. I think I'm going to put it over here in this sector right next to my sector for reasons that will become clear shortly. All right. So I've done my setup and now Jen's got to do the same thing. She puts two of hers and she'll put her two in these, these kind of like, well, actually, this is like a little bathroom and this is like a little command room. You can see how these, these walls kind of create, the, these two scientists are kind of hiding. Because if my alien ever makes it over here and comes into this room and say takes this spot, this alien would be capable, if it was upgraded, that is, of attacking here and here. So if Jen put both of her guys here, this alien could hit both of her scientists. But by the, but putting them both here, my alien could either go here or here, but can only ever hit one of them. So, you know, there's a little, you know, so Jen's, and actually that's unique, I think, to Jen's starting room, that she's actually got two places to hide. Most of the rooms only have one. You can see, you know, if somebody's in this room, they could be attacked from either direction, but this is only one. Jen's room has two places to hide, so that's where she's putting her two. Whereas me, on the, I'm on the opposite. In my space, I'm putting them out in, like, putting it here means it can attack here, here, and here. All right. So anyway, and now Jen's got to put her other side to some place, and again, it could go any place. Where's she going to put it? Hmm... Oh, ah, okay. <clears throat> I know what Jen's going to do. She's going to put it over here. Um, and you might think that's a bit dangerous for her, but don't forget, my aliens are babies. They can't attack yet. So this scientist is safe. And um, although, again, if it were upgraded, you could see there's no wall between them. But the, she knows the scientist is safe, and she has a reason for choosing this, and that will become very clear as soon as we start playing. Playing, you say? Yeah, let's do that. It's been 10 minutes. Wouldn't you like to see this game played? I think you would. Okay. So now we start. I'm the first player. And every turn, we go through these four steps. Moving, action cards, section ac sector actions, and pending cards. Okay, so let's do it. First of all, we move. And what that means is I can pick any of my three units. By the way, these are the three units I will have over the course of the entire game. I will always have these. I never lose these. I can pick one of them and move them. 
And now this is the interesting thing about this game. You might th you might expect from the subject matter and, and actually from the designer, who is the designer of Nirishima Hex, that this is like kind of a tactical war game and I want to move more aliens over here to surround the scientists. It doesn't work that way. What this is, is this space station is a giant Moncala. If you ever played Trajan from Stefan Feld, you know how the Moncala works. Basically, whenever you pick up a piece and move it, it has to move a number of sectors equal to the number of units that are in the room. So if I want to move either of these guys, there's two guys in this room. I could move this guy. Since there's two guys, I can move him one, two sectors. Or I can move this guy one, two sectors. Now what I originally wanted to do is, I had to put this guy over here by himself. Because what I was going to do is, I was going to start out and move this guy. Since he'd be here by himself, he would only move one. And he would come over here with his buddies. And then I would be able to activate this room. That's what I wanted to do. But because Jen came over here, now there are two um, guys in this sector. So if I want this guy to move, I have to pick him up and move, you know, since there's two, he goes one, two. And so Jen has basically thwarted my plans to activate, e to either build the vent shortcut or the tentacles. Because to build these, I had to land in here. But now because Jen came here, I can't. I have to move him two spaces. And they always move clockwise, the number of spaces, based on the number of units that are in that room. Let's see. So now, do I want to move these two guys one, two spaces to land over in Jen's section, or do I want to move this guy one, two spaces to land over here in. Um, actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's see. Originally, I wanted to move this guy one. I can't, so at least I'm going to take advantage of the fact that Jen came here. I'm going to move him two. One. Two. And so that means he, I could put him in any of these four spaces in, in this room, in any of these four sections of the room of, was, I think this is called the, the tech lab. Okay, so my little guy has landed in the tech lab. So my movement is done. If the movement is always, you pick up one guy and move him clockwise, the number of spaces equal to the number of units in the room he's currently in. So there's two, I moved him over here. Now we do action cards. Now, there are no action cards in this room. An action card, like Jen's camcorder, is an action card. What that means is every time Jen lands in this room, she can take the data out of the camcorder. This small laboratory that Jen's wanting to build is also, it means if you can do, if Jen ever lands in the room where this thing has been installed, it's not installed yet. Right now it's pending. It hasn't been built yet. But once Jen builds it, say maybe she puts it over here, that means whenever she lands in this room, she activates the lab. Now, as it happens, I've just landed here. There are no cards for me to activate, so we skip the card, the action card phase, move on to the sector action phase. Now, that's pretty cool because this sector, the special power of this sector is I get to immediately do another move. I get to do two turns back to back. So that's actually pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to do my sector action, which means I'm going to take another action. And now, this guy who moved, he can never move again. So what I can do is, to indicate that, I can move him from here to here to indicate that he's locked. He, I can't move him. It's my second turn. I can't move him again. So I've got to choose one of these two guys. These guys, there's two in the room. So I pick him up. And two means I move two. One, two. And I land over here in Jen's spot right next to this scientist who I'd like to eat, but I can't because I'm a little baby. Okay. So and I'm doing a second move, so I go through everything again. I've done my movement. Action cards, again, I have no action cards I could activate here. Then we go on to the sector action. Now, the sector action of a home zone, this is Jen's home laboratory. Sector action is you can either get an upgrade or you can clear out an enemy installation in this sector. But here's the thing, since this is Jen's sector, I cannot activate her sector. So I, as an alien in the scientist lab, cannot do either of these bonuses. In the same way, if Jen ever moves her guys into my hive, she can't do my bonuses. So I have to unfortunately skip the uh, sector activation, but then I can move on to pending. And you can see Jen has put two pending cards here, her gripper and her small lab. And now what I can do is my pending action, if there is an enemy um, pending card, I can destroy it. So I've moved this guy in here and he is going to destroy one of these things. I can either destroy the gripper, which like I said kind of hampers me. I think I'm going to destroy this, this small lab. I think this is a bigger threat because if Jen gets this built, she can just go there anytime she wants and I can't really stop her. You know, if she builds the gripper, I can just be careful to avoid it and not move where it is. But if Jen builds a laboratory, so I think this is worse. So I'm going to destroy this lab. That was my pending card action. However, um, whenever you destroy one of the enemy's cards, you immediately have to replace it with one of your own. So now I am going to install or not install, but pending, you know, it's not installed yet. It's, I'm going to have the potential of building a ghost strike. All right. 
And now that was my turn, my full turn, which basically I got two turns. I moved over, I um, didn't do anything in this room, but then I triggered a second move, which I moved over here, and I destroyed one of Jen's um, potential installations and put in my own. And my turn is over. Now it is Jen's turn. And once again, she starts out with moving. This character can move one space and come over here into my lab. And then, so Jen could do the same thing to me. She can move over here and destroy one of my pending elements as well and get another one of her own started. Alternatively, she could pick up one of these guys and move them two spaces. Or no, I'm sorry, th ooh, three spaces. There's one, two, three of them. So that means if she wants to move either of these guys, they'd go one, two, three. So actually, no matter what, whichever um, character Jen moves, they're all gonna end up in my zone. And so Jen's gotta ask herself, which one does she wanna move more? Because she's, she's not only thinking about this move, but future moves as well. If she moves this guy out, then in a future move, this guy could move two spaces and come over here and get the malfunction thing. Um, but then you know you never know if I'm gonna move out and then suddenly that guy can only move one But then if that guy only moves one, maybe Jen can come over here and collect her camcorder data, etc, etc I think Jen is gonna make the bigger move She's gonna pick up this scientist because this is the one that's exposed to the alien again The baby alien is a baby it doesn't really have to worry about it yet But just to be on the safe side Jen's gonna pick this scientist up and because there's three in here She's gonna go one two three and she has just shown up in my neck of the woods And I guess she'll go on ahead and hide in this room where my other alien can't get to it and now she goes through action cards, sector cards, pending cards. There are no action cards for her. Sector cards, um, sector actions, she can't use. In the same way I couldn't do an action in hers, she can't do an action in mine. And now she goes to the pending. She's going to destroy one of mine. Um, she doesn't have to. This is optional, but obviously it'd be in her best interest. Um, but here's the thing, the faster we go through these cards, the faster we go through our deck, the faster we run down the time. And so, you know, it might be later on that I'm way ahead in points and maybe Jen wouldn't want to destroy one of my cards because that might make the game end sooner when I'm in the lead. But right now, early game, she wants to destroy everything she can of mine. Does she want to get rid of my tentacles, which slow her down, or my vent shortcut, which speeds me up? Hmm, let's see. I think she'll get rid of the tentacles because uh, she doesn't want me to be hampering her. So she's destroying that, and when she destroys one of my cards, she replaces it with one of her own station schematics. Okay, which, if she installs this, lets her, whenever she lands on it, immediately build pending cards later on. So that's actually pretty cool. Okay, and that was it for her. Back to me, back to my turn. Now I've got three guys. If I move this guy, he would go one, two spaces. If I move this guy, he would go one space. So both of these guys are going to end up over here in the lab. Or if I move this guy, he would go one, two spaces and end up over here. Um, basically in this room where there's not really anything going on. Although if he lands over here, he could activate this malfunction, which is with the special power of this room. And it, um, you know, so if I move this guy two spaces over here, I could then force any of Jen's cards to malfunction. But I think instead of that, I think instead of that, I am going to, before Jen gets a chance to destroy my ghost strike, I'm gonna see that that thing is finished building. So what do I do? Uh, do I wanna move this guy two spaces or this guy one space? Let's see. I will move this guy one space. So he's by himself, so he only moves one space, and I'll put him over here, so if they ever could attack, he'd be able to hit this scientist. All right, so now, once again, I have no action cards. I can't do the sector, but for pending cards, I now have a choice. I could destroy Jen's grippers and put my abduction card into pending status. So I could destroy that, or I could finish my ghost strike and actually get it built. And you know, I'd like to destroy Jen's stuff, but I think even more importantly, I want to get my own stuff built before Jen destroys it. So for my pending action, I am going to take ghost strike and build it. Boom. Okay, this card I can put, I don't have to put it in this sector, I can put it in any zone, any sector in the station that I want. And what that means is in the future when I land in this room, I get to um, basically activate an attack of all my units in any sector. I can, I, with the Ghost Strike, this can force me to start attacking Jen. Although even still, it's not going to do me much good until I start upgrading my guys so they can actually have an attack. Right now, they're still babies. The Space Marines, by the way, are the only race that start out with the ability to attack. Everybody else has to get upgraded. Alrighty, so Ghost Strike. Where do I want to put it? Now, I don't want to put it in this room because this room already causes an onslaught, which is a strike in every room. So putting it here would be silly because that just means I'm doubling up the strike functions. I got to put this in a room where I want to go, where I, where I want to show off a, a lot. I think I might want to put it over here because this is an awesome room to be in because every time I get here, I get to do another action. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna put it over here. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in this room. Now, I've got three places. I can't put it here. I can't put it over an existing installation. So I can put it in this blank space or I could put it here or here. And I'm, if I put it in either of these spots, that means I get to take that card, which is an instant I can do anytime I want. So gateway means in the future, if I have this card, whenever I want, I could move an extra space when I desperately need to. This one means I could play this whenever I want and make one of Jen's cards malfunction. Like make her camcorder malfunction. That's pretty cool. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna install Ghost Strike here. And that means I have now gotten the ability to cause a malfunction. Um, and this is a one-time thing. Once I use it, it's gone. But on, any, on now or any turn in the future, I could cause a malfunction. Now, I don't think I'll do it right now because I don't need to make anything malfunction. Actually, let's think about this. Let's see, there's no reason to make the camcorder malfunction because I haven't actually exposed myself to it. She hasn't filmed me yet. I could make this gripper malfunction so it could never get built or this station schematics malfunction. In fact, actually look at it. Here's the thing. Jen, on her turn, she could have this guy move one space and then she would be able to build the station schematics. So I think I'm gonna use the malfunction immediately, right away, and that means I have caused her station schematics to malfunction. And that means even if she moved in here, she could not build it now. Okay, so boom, there you go. That was my turn, right? Okay, now it's Jen's turn again. So once again, she's gonna move. And that she was planning on doing exactly this, just moving one space, building her schematics, which would give her a way to, instantly, to build cards much, much faster. But now I've kind of scuppered that. She could still move in here to destroy my vent shortcut, but what else could she do? This, there's two guys in here, so she can move two spaces and end up back here in this room, which would be kind of nice, because then, oh, whoops, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot. After I, I, after I completed my ghost strike, whenever you get rid of a card, whether it's yours or an opponent's, you have to immediately replace it. So I replaced it with my abduction. So I'm working on this abduction now. Okay, now it's Jen's turn, right. This guy could move one, two, three spaces, could come over here, this guy can move one, so two of Jen's guys can move over here and destroy my vent shortcut, but unfortunately could not do that. This guy could go one, two, and either destroy my abduction or build the gripper. Hmm, I think Jen likes that more. She's gonna have this guy, there's two guys in here, go one, two, and move into this room. Now this room is full, which has some interesting elements. And now it, it doesn't matter right now, but as you can see, first you move, then if you move into a room where there's traps, you deal with them. And now uh, there are no traps for Jen in here, so she doesn't have to worry about traps. Then there's a lesser onslaught. If you ever move into a room and then all four rooms are, all four spaces in the room are full, you could then trigger an attack and your forces could attack the enemy. So if both of these guys were upgraded right now, when Jen moved in here, this one would shoot at this one, this one would shoot at this one, and I would take two points of group damage. But Jen hasn't upgraded her scientist yet, so she can't do that. However, she has just moved into her home court. And so let's walk through that. First of all, she did her move. Now she does action cards. There are no action cards still. Then she does sector action. This is nice. This is Jen's sector action. Remember, I've moved two guys in here and I wasn't able to do the action. Jen can. She can either take an upgrade or she could clear out cards I had installed. Now, I haven't installed any cards here, so Jen's not gonna do that. Instead, she's gonna take an upgrade. And now she can basically put this in her inventory and she can hold up to six of these at a time. And she can use them whenever she wants. And I'm thinking, let's see, does she want to use them? There's two things you can upgrade. Jen can use this to flip one of her science, scientists and basically give them a gun. And now in the future, this scientist could attack. Alternatively, Jen could upgrade one of her existing installations. Now right now, she only has one. She has this camcorder. If she upgrades this camcorder, by default right now, when I move an alien into this room, Jen scores two points worth of data. But if I were to upgrade this, it would go from two points to four points. Or is it, or is it three? I forget. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, no, it says plus one. So it would, it would upgrade this to, to score three points of data instead of two. Now, Jen would like to record this because this is a great way for her to score points whenever I move into this room. But here's the problem. I would want to move into this room to cause an attack but I can always move into this room now and cause an attack in my ghost strike. So I don't have to go here anymore. So maybe it's not so good for Jen to upgrade this. Instead, I think she's gonna spend her upgrade immediately and she's gonna upgrade this scientist and now boom, this scientist is armed. In the future, it could actually attack. 
Okay, so anyway, that was her sector phase. Now she goes on to her pending and she's got a choice. Does she either want to um, destroy my abduction, which lets me, oh, that's pretty cool, relocate one enemy unit from this sector. So whenever I land on an abduction, I can move Jen's pieces around against her will and maybe set up a, a big super strike. Do I want to do that? Does she want to destroy that? Or does she want to successfully build her gripper and start messing with me and slowing me down? Like, for instance, if she puts the gripper in here, this is a room I want to come to now because it's got my ghost strike. But if she puts the gripper in here, every time I come here, I'd get trapped. So that's kind of cool. So, I mean, it, it's always a tough choice. Does she want to build up her own defenses or obliterate mine? Hmm. <laughs> and actually, I'm wondering, does she want to get... I think actually instead of um, upgrading a guy, she is going to hold on to this upgrade a little bit more. She's not going to do it immediately because she's probably not going to attack him, but she's going to hold on to that for a while. So, destroy my abduction thing or build her own gripper thing. Let's see. I think she will... You know what? She does not want me to be able to abduct her. So she's going to destroy this. And now after you destroy, she immediately, and now she has this malfunction, uh, which means whenever she lands in a room where this is installed, if she installs it, she can put a malfunction happen. She can make a malfunction happen anywhere. Very powerful. So that was her turn. My turn. Now I can either move this guy one space, which as you recall, when I, oh yeah, when I move in here, that means I get another action or I can move these guys. There's four, one, two, three, four. So interestingly, um, whatever I do, I'm going to end up in this room. Hmm. So, what the heck? Let's have this guy move one. All right, so he's coming there. Um, now, I get an action. I get to do an action, the ghost strike, but unfor and which means I could activate attacks um, of my units in any sector. So I could activate an attack here. Unfortunately, I've never upgraded my guys, so they don't actually bite. Uh, I need to upgrade my guys. I really need to start maneuvering so that I can get over here so I can upgrade and start biting Jen. Because we're in a stalemate until then. Let's see. Uh, right. Anyway, so I moved over here. I, I could, there's a sector action I can't do, or I could. I can do this, but it doesn't do anything. And now I get to do another action. So my second action will be moving one of these guys. And it's four spaces. So one, two, three, four. And boom, now he's in here. Ta-da. Okay. And, um, you know, again, I could do the activation. That's no point. But I will get to move a third time since I put two guys in here. On this turn, I will get to do three turns. So my third turn is... I'll move this guy. There's only three, and I can't move them again. They can't move. They're locked into this room. This guy can only move three spaces. He goes one, two, three, and finally, one of my guys has made it back home. Hi, buddy. So, uh, there's no action cards, but then the sector action is I get an upgrade. Mm -mm -mm. And I am going to immediately use my upgrade, and who am I going to... I can upgrade this guy or one of those guys. These guys can move two spaces. I'm gonna move this guy. No, I'm gonna move upgrade this guy. Okay, and that was my, and then a pending. Now I can successfully build my vent shortcut. I cannot, since I've mal malfunctioned this, I can't destroy this now, ironically, even though I'd like to because it's malfunctioning, but I can, I can build this. Where am I gonna put a vent shortcut? That lets me skip ahead really quick. Let's see. I don't think I'm particularly excited about ever coming into this room. So I think I will set this in here so that I can skip ahead to my own room that much faster. And I'll take one of these, which gives me either a gateway, which is a one-time use, I, could, I can travel farther, or the card for hire. During my turn, I can install the top card. Oh, I love this, this is awesome. So I've installed a vent. So this means I can skip this room now in the future. And um, during my turn, I can do this right now if I wanted, I can install this top card of my deck to an empty installed slot uh, I can't I can't put it where a bonus card is, so I couldn't get another bonus card. And I can do this anytime. So I can install this hive. What the heck? Let's do it. Let's just put the pressure on Jen and me. I, I can't attack. Well, finally, I've got a guy who can attack. I've got some hidden aliens over here. I've got a ghost strike. I can skip over here. And now I'm going to install my hive somewhere, which um, whenever Jen lands here, it's a trap, and she will take one damage. Where do I want to install this? Now, I want, what I want to do, I want to install it in her own room. So whenever she goes to her own room, she takes a point of damage. But here's the problem. Here's the danger of installing one of my cards in her rooms. When she lands here, she can, um, instead of taking the upgrade, she can remove my installed card. So my hive might not last long. So where do I want to put it? 
I want to put it, I know, hmm, where do I want to put it? You know what, I think I'll put it over here. I'll put it in my own zone. So if Jen ever comes to my zone, there's a, a trap waiting for her. Okay. Although, is she ever going to come to my place? I don't think she would want to. Maybe I'll put it over here in the corridors. Yeah, because then if she ever does get data on me, and then comes over here, she has to come here to collect the data, she would get hit by the hive, which is a trap. Right? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Okay, boom. So that was my turn. Oh, and oh, we're half hour now. I haven't gotten any combat yet. But you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because, you know, I will do an extended run through and I will keep playing and you'll definitely start getting to see some combat. You'll start to see some more. But you start to get an idea of how things escalate. You know, I've now got an alien who can start attacking Jen if I get him into the right place at the right time. But it's more than that. I can't just put him in here. He won't attack until I then have some other guy either land here to trigger an onslaught or land here to trigger a ghost strike. So the game is really complex. It's a really interesting puzzle that evolves over time. And meanwhile, Jen has not been successful in building up any of her stuff, um, but she's got an upgrade that she could use, and if she can get one of these things going. But anyway, so if you'd like to see some more, definitely some more exciting stuff will happen in the extended run through. For a button on that, or there's a button on screen for that, hit it right now if you like, or you can go for the other one for final thoughts. Your choice. In five, four, three, two, one.